above it all Untouchable A new animal This is how legends are made Major contact, he makes Nathan. They're gonna make it three wide. Tennessee, three wide. Romo making it four wide. Four wide here, Bristol strong. I never thought we would ever see that. I never thought we would ever say that here in Bristol. But they were four wide through one and two that last time. This is how legends are made. Does he use the bumper? Trying to prevent someone from getting those extra two bonus points, but here comes Zach. Zach trying to make a run. Here comes Evo. He's gonna drive it underneath uh, Nick. Nick trying to block him. Evo, payback from stage one. Evo's gonna clear him coming off the floor. Evo's gonna get the win. Nick second and Zach claiming third. Oh, here we go through three and four for the final time. It is gonna be an absolute dog fight for the win here at Michigan. Three and four for the final time, and the leader's right. The leader's right. Nick Trudeau pulls away up front. He is going to get his first next card cup win here in Michigan. This is how legends are made. What's good, everybody? Welcome back here to a brand new season of the Next Car Racing League. Tonight is Sunday. You guys know what that means. It's getting down and dirty at Daytona International Speedway for the first race of the season. And brand new to the season, we have a brand new co <clears throat> excuse me co-broadcaster joining the booth you guys know him as the evo b he is our one-time series champion please welcome him to the booth what's going on evo uh no much run so i throw my head the ringer after whooping nick's ass multiple times and commentated him and commentated the series i love the trucks in this league and it's always great to be part of it and watch it but it's about time i get my ass on this side of the uh, race and watch the good racing. Absolutely. That's going to be my biggest question for you here tonight. What is going to be your biggest obstacle stepping out of that truck and coming up to the booth? I'll remember your driver's names. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> I mean, obviously, as we both saw in the sign-up um, lineup sheet tonight, we have a full sign-up of, what, 18, 16 guys. That's the first time in a long time we've had that. Mm -hmm. And... It's definitely going to be interesting, too, that there's no teams, no one's alliance, no one's working together. It's yourself and your truck and your own strategy. You can't work with others and trust what they're going to say. Yes, sir, and that's a point we're going to hit here in a little bit. I've got some key notes, some key changes that we're going to go over for this season. Uh, series or league-wide, not just the truck series, but cup series as well with the no teams. That no teams means no teammates, which always equals no commitment. So it's going to be interesting to see these drivers with no commitments. Some Chevys are going to be working with some Fords. Some Fords are going to be working with some Toyotas. It's going to be cool to see different drivers working together and not having to worry about a team aspect. So they can, I guess, afford to be a little selfish here. Am I right, Evo? Oh, 100%. I mean, I'll see... I teamed with two of the Cups before. I teamed with others in the truck series before. Even going to tonight's race is always work with their teammates or work with manufacturer alliances. But tonight and tomorrow night, we're going into it of, okay, can I trust this guy? Are we going the same strategy or are we doing something different? Um, I would not be shocked tonight if during this ages someone's got a pit. Mm -hmm. They're doing gas only or just right side, not taking forward fuel. Right, and... That's another thing I want to hit. My last season that I was doing this before I left, our first day, our first race at Daytona, coming to the end of stage one, we had three drivers run out of fuel coming to the checkered flag. So is that going to be something we're going to have to keep an eye on again here tonight? Do you think it's going to be a fuel run, or do you think some other different strategy is going to play into this one? I'm, I'm going to say it's a fuel run. I mean, with how big of a fuel that we got, we probably have some guys like – Nick, Moore, Ranger, probably going to be tailing the back a little bit, just relaxing, cooling, saying, hey, my race is towards the end, not this early racing. But also, whoever, I would say top three, they're screwed. They're going to have to save fuel. I'm trying to figure out how can they make it to the end if they want those key crucial stage points for the playoffs when it comes to that time of the season. Oh, yeah, 100%. The place to be this, I believe, this season with being such a big field. Like you said, we have 17 drivers. Never before in the history of NextCar have we had that many. 
So at a track like Daytona and Talladega, I think the place to be right now is in the back. Oh, 100%. You don't want to risk it for the biscuit too early no, on and get caught up on a wreck and lose that key crucial um, positions. But also on top of that, you got to play your cards right. I mean, also, as we saw the, I think it was two seasons ago, I ran out of gas before we stage on and that completely threw off my strategy. But it's all to the matter of the point of save, save, save. Don't be full throttle all the time. Try to lift and save some fuel as much as you can without causing a havoc and rest of the back. I would not be shocked if we have five, six, seven guys even, two, three seconds away from the front of the field, you know, just coasting and just riding along. And when it comes down to the stage, they start making their push. Oh, absolutely. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get our... Uh pre-race drivers into discord so we can contact them uh yeah no it's all gonna come down to and it's a big change having those no teams but you're gonna have to be real peculiar on who you pick to work with because not everybody is gonna be your friend you don't have that team alliance understand i what i think what's probably gonna happen tonight is that we're gonna see some of the key veterans like as i mentioned the names before nick moore ranger g pre tennessee Pierce. They're all probably be working together because they are familiar with each other and they know mm-hmm. how each other, you know, race. And then we're probably going to see some of those new guys even do work together and be like, hey, I'm not familiar with you. I haven't raced with you that much, but I'll work with you. Hey, Mid-Atlantic Motorsports, you know, what's going on, buddy? Appreciate the uh, there follow there, my man. To, Absolutely. You know, Brandon the is filling in here tonight. We have a guy that is uh, could not make it, so he is filling in here tonight. So appreciate the follow there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we actually have our two guys in here for the pre-race. It's all speculation up here in the booth, but let's go ahead and bring those guys in and figure out what exactly their plan is. So we're going to start it off here this evening talking to the reigning series champion. That is Tennessee Titan. What is going on, buddy? What's up, Ronnie? How's it going? Oh, I can't complain, brother, but I'm sure you can't either. You got to brace it all in, winning that se- that uh, series championship last season. How did that make for the postseason coming into this brand new season? It was it was awesome. Like it put a bunch of pressure on the season, though. Me going out there and winning the championship was like a dream come true. Something I never thought would be possible when I joined NextCar. Um, but put a bunch of work and improved every week and every season and got done last season but what's done now is put a label on me all these guys coming in think i'm all that i want to take my crown away i gotta go out there and prove to them why i won the championship last year oh yeah and you have got a ton of people trying to take that crown away 17 drivers this season that is the biggest ever in next car not just the truck series but ever in next car how does that play a factor into your preparing for this season Honestly, I kind of view it as a strength. One of my biggest strengths last year was consistency. Yeah, I wrapped up some good wins, but being able to run there to the front is a huge part of points. And with more drivers, that consistency is going to matter even more this year than ever. So going out here and getting top five finishes is way more important than it was before. And I think it's going to play into my strengths. I might not win as much this year, but I do think I'll be near the very top of the points. So that kind of leads me right into my next question. So the only one to have multiple championships in next car is Nick. What is it going to, the only one to have multiple championships here in next car is Nick. What is it going to take this season from you to join him in that elusive club of being a two-time champion? It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of patience. It's going to be a year. It's going to be, it's a long season. I've got to run up front. I've got to grab a few wins here and there. I've got to rack up those points for the playoffs. And then when playoffs comes, that round where we have – I'm circling that round where we have uh, Watkins Glen and Dover. Dover has historically been a terrible track for me. I've got to work on my bad tracks and make them not as bad so I can make it to that championship round have a shot to defend my crown. Well, man, I think you can definitely get it done. So the motto this year for next car is – Who's next? Do you think, sitting right here, right now, heading into the first race of the season, do you think you have what it takes to be the next guy to get that second championship? 
Absolutely. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in it, or uh, <laughs> Ronnie. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm, very, I'm super excited for this season, though, and I'm excited for the competition. We got many guys out here that are really tough racers that we've been around and got a bunch of new faces and some old ones coming back. So it's going to be a hell of a season. It's going to be a really big challenge, and I'm all for it. Yes, sir, and you guys are going to put on one heck of a show for us up here in the booth. I appreciate it, buddy. We are going to move on to Nick next. You got us, my man. Yeah, go ahead. All right, dude. It has been a while since you have found yourself celebrating at the end of the season being crowned champion. What is it going to take from you this season to turn it around and get up there and battle Tennessee and take that crown from him at the end of this one? Uh, just like Tennessee said, I think uh, it's going to be a lot of consistency throughout the season. You know, you got to finish, you know, top three, top four um, every single week to have a shot at it. Uh, we can't have those bad runs like we did last year. Um, there's a few races that I wish I would have had back. And, um, no, you can't be – even top five, I don't think will be good enough. you got to run – no top three every single week. You got to have a handful of wins in there. So I'm going to be putting in a lot of work this season. You know, hopefully, and get back, get back uh, my championship. Absolutely. So I hit it a little bit there with Tennessee. What is your take on having 17 guys this season? Once again, the biggest field ever in next car. Yeah, having that many guys is great. It uh, just shows how great the league is, and you know. Making videos like you did, you know, showcasing our type of racing that we have week in and week out. Um, you know, we have we have great races every single every single race that we do. Um, you know, having that many guys just kind of proves how how good we are. And you know, them coming in, they need to, they I'm sure have something to prove. Um, but you no, know, we're gonna show them how the big boys do it over here. Yes, sir. Now, one last question for you. Maybe it was just coincidence. I don't know. But when you won your first two championships of NextCar, you were driving that number three truck. This season, you have gone back to the number three, stepping out of that 24. Is that kind of a try to get back to that championship way, or is that just completely coincidental? No, no, I did that on purpose. Um, I knew I was running the three, and I won some championships with it. And no, we ran really good with it. So, um, put Chase's truck aside and said, "No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the three, and hopefully, um, I can bring some good mojo back, and we can get back back to it." Well, I have no doubt in my mind you and Tennessee are going to put on one heck of a show, and one of y'all can get it done at the end of this one. But best of luck to both of you guys tonight, and hopefully, maybe we'll be talking to one of you guys out of victory lane. Thanks, Ron. Let's hope so. Thanks, Ron. Keep going. Yep. Talk to you at the end. All right. So there you had it, Eva. Talk to two of our drivers, pretty much probably two favorite drivers to win this thing at the end of the season. So what do you get? What is your thoughts on this upcoming season? Who's your first race pick to win a championship? My honest first pick race or first pick champion um, before this race tonight. I'm going to say it's it's not one of two who's in Discord. I mean, I have much respect of Nick and Ten for what they did and how they won their championships. I'm going to pick a old cup champion who is running in the series Sunday nights now. I'm picking Ranger. Uh, yep, I, I said the season that going into, you know, season over at Daytona, um, I'm racing against a truck champion in Nick. I'm racing a cup champion in Ranger. There's two champions in the field that I had to step up and say, hey, move aside. It's my time to shine. And Ranger can get it done. Ranger is a fast guy, and he knows how to get up to the front of the field and control the field. But, you know, with races like tonight, um, Watkins Glen, and other tracks, this is a wild card race. You have to make sure you don't get caught up in those messes. Mm -hmm. And like uh, Tennessee and Nick Bull said, Consistency is going to be the key factor tonight, oh, but yeah. also to comment back on what Nick said, top three is probably going to be the best bet mm -hmm. if you're going to make it to the final four. Not the top five, not the top six, not top seven, or even top tens. You're going to want to be one of those 
uh, trucks to finish top three and get those key playoff points or even win a stage and get that one point added going in the first round of the playoffs this year. Um, when I went on my tear and won my championship, I banked on those playoff points of going, if I build up those stage wins, I can win their championship early enough. And I did with three races left, but we're not going back to that format. We're going to the format of what, two, three races around. Yep. Um, with that, this part of the season, this is going to be the key factor mm-hmm. where you build up those points so you have enough of that buffer. If you screw up at a track, that buffer helps you. Right. Yeah, and like you were saying, you about Ranger being an old guy in this league and making his return. He is not the only veteran that is making his return. Moore, Austin Moore is making his return to next car. You guys would know him from seasons one, two, and three. He was up in the booth with me before we transferred to Sean and then now to Evo up here. So Moore is a key veteran, and it is great to have him back. So welcome back, Moore and Ranger. And, yeah, my early pick to win that championship is Ranger. You took those words right out of my mouth when you said his name because he put on one heck of a show. I believe he won, was it season one and two's championship in the cup? I I think so because I remember – Season three, he only ran trucks, right? And he didn't run cup. I think he went back to back, and then, of course, Smitty went on a tear, right? And, you yeah. know, the gold championship straight. But you know, like as Nick said, we got these new guys who are coming in, and I will say this now of being a wildy expert on uh, some of the races in the trucks. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid, you new guys, to message us. We'll be more glad to give us give you guys tips and tricks oh, yeah. how to get faster, how to get up to the front, how to, you know, compete for a win it week in, week out, instead of sitting in the back and getting, you know, all pissy that you're not competing. Right. It's learning steps. You got to take your steps. That's yep. how my first season went until Nick blew off a couple races and I won. Mm-hmm. But don't be afraid to message us. We're here to help. We're not here to, you know, pick bones and rub it in saying, oh, we're the best there is, the best there ever was. Right. This is a fun competitive league that I love running in, and it's the only league that I will probably consistently run in mm-hmm. no matter how many times I get my ass whipped <laughs> week in, week out by a freaking Penske 12 or a JGR 20. Yeah, and like you said, there is a ton of new drivers this season. We have eight brand new rookies. Just under half the field is brand new rookies running for that rookie of the year. But real quick, before we get too much further, we are going to introduce all 17 drivers for this season. Go ahead and check out the brand new driver intro video. We are no longer doing um, individual driver intros. It's all wrapped into one video now, so we're going to go ahead and play that real quick. Go ahead and enjoy that and pick your favorite drivers. Taking battle stations, I ain't on vacation I'm just glowing up, living on aspirations I beat the expectations, and change the generations And I'm still jumping fences, and you're just imitation Even while I'm taking places, but I don't look for praises I play this life like a game, let hold the stages Let me pull phrases, then do a couple pages Watch this, watch this, watch this Let, let me the video or those are the drivers all 17 making their hopes and dreams of starting the season getting out of here winning that championship now evo you just said real quick while that video was playing you mentioned that you think it's going to be a rookie coming out of here that is going to get that win so when we first started this i don't know if you remember pack attack or not 
But when he was a rookie, he started here in the trucks, and he made his presence known immediately as a rookie, and he damn near won this race. Oh, yeah. I, I remember back. I mean, a whole lot of guys that are in the Cup Series now, you know, I race with them in trucks, mm-hmm. and half of them I looked at, like, holy shit. How how are you dominating? How are you so far this high up of, yep. you know, dragging us across the track? Um, you know, I was like, you said Pack Attack, um, Toys and Attic, or AKA Kamikaze, um, Tennessee, you know, a whole lot of guys who came from the truck series, mm-hmm. their first one came from a super speedway or a mile and a half track where they showed what talent they had. Um, if they, some of these rookies and some of these veterans, if they play the cards right, they can be the truck, you know. Not the damsel in distress leading on the last lap. They could be the truck in second, make the last lap pass, and win. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, I hope to God Nick's not in first or second. <laughs> and he doesn't get up to the ball because that's what I did, and I didn't mean to do that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of these guys, I mean, a lot of these rookies, I mean, as you said, half the field or majority of the field is rookies. Yep. They're going to want to show Nick, Kamikaze, Toys, Pierce, Tennessee, all these veterans – hey, we're here to, you know, play with you boys. We're here to compete. We're not here to mess around. Right. Yep, and like you said, I just hope they don't get too aggressive about it. But these guys, they seem like they got a very good head on their shoulders, and I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. No, I I hope to God it's not. I hope this field remains as an 18-field, you know, trucks or 17, however big Mm -hmm. a field it is. I, I hope to see it continue on the following seasons for how much work both you, Nick, um, G. Pre, Tennessee, all you guys who put so much work and effort into this league since I was here season three. Mm-hmm. This league has grown so much oh, yeah. where I look towards this every day of the week of going <laughs> – Truck race on Sunday, cup on Monday, and hopefully in the near future, Xfinity on Tuesdays. Yeah. And we have all three series running again and not going to that crappy NASCAR game they just released. Yeah, no, my plan was definitely to get Xfinity back up and running now that I'm home, but I just did not have enough time when I got home between the returning and going back home and everything to see the family and the season starting. There just wasn't enough time for everything to work out. But next season, it will be back up and running. I can promise you that. I'm already starting recruiting. I'm getting it back up and everything. So next season, it will be back up. We will be back up to three series. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, shit. I might have to buy myself a new wheel. Get rid of the C-150. Get the, where the hell new Thrustmaster wheel they got. Yeah. I'll join. Yep. But, uh... Just... Go ahead. Go on. Nope, go ahead. No, you go. All right, well... No, you go. (laughs) Well, like we said at the beginning of this broadcast, there are quite a few new changes to this season. So let's... Thanks, someone who actually experienced the trucks and success. (laughs) I don't think it ever did. Hundred percent. I mean, even when last season I ran team captain for SHR, there was some times where I'll just look at my drivers. I'm like, "What are you doing? We came in tonight with a mindset, with a goal, and you decided to change it for your own glory." But as we all say, myself, you, Nick, yada yada yada, it's a game. It's nothing to take serious. You know, this is just bragging rights, but no teams, no teammates. That's going to play a huge factor of people trying to get setups in for these tracks, um, like a big one in the calendar that I'm circling, my hometown track, Watkins Glen. 
And tonight, you know, there are going to be a lot of people who are trying to figure out setups of how to be fast and how to compete. Oh, 100%. Agreed as well. I... I would hope that whoever is in running of winning work of the year this year, I'm going to place a bet saying one of our final four is going to be a rookie. A hundred percent with eight new rookies. I don't, I myself wasn't part of the recruiting process. I didn't see how they race. I didn't know how they were, you know, were they clean, were they dirty? Um, I would say one out of the eight will make it to the final four or hell three out of the four or all four. Well, I'll say two is to be safe as well. <laughs> Hmm. I'll say I'm not really familiar with either one of them, but I I would hope that, like as you said, two out of the eight rookies or even more make it to the final four, showing that we have more competition. It's not a consistent, you know, guaranteed finisher of <clears throat> myself always winning the races or anything. You know, we brought in new faces, we brought new ideas, new strategies, and new game set for this series for this league. And as I've previously said, we're back bigger than and better than ever. And we're ready to take this by storm and, you know, grab on the ropes and go for the ride. Uh, tennis, yeah. Well, Tennessee's still sticking in the four. He ran in the four, I think, the last two seasons now, or three. But, you know, like, as Nick said during the pre-race interviews, he had good mojo going at three truck. I remember seeing that three truck always being ahead of me and staring at his bumper, think, myself thinking, how do I get better where he's looking at my bumper and not the other way around? And, Honestly, I'm going to say this now. For how much, yes, Chase is truck, I will. I absolutely love this game. I think that truck was a curse to him. After going to that truck, he only had two wins. And, you know, not to toot my horn, those two wins came to races I wasn't running. And it's good to see him back in that three truck where he had the success and actually being the only guy in the truck series to go back-to-back. You know, we haven't had a back-to-back champion since I dethroned Nick. It went myself, Pierce, and Ten. I would love to see Ten go back-to-back, but I would love to see even more Nick go back on that top pedestal and reclaim what is his. Absolutely, and I'm pretty sure I just uh, screwed up in that live stream on this slide. I don't think I had my microphone actually working on that, so... Uh, yeah, like you were saying, it's going to be interesting to see if maybe that curse goes away with him going into that number three. And the last but not least is once again welcoming back Moore and Ranger making their return to next card. That is huge. Those are two veterans that when they left the league, it 
made an impact, you know, but now that they're back, they're going to make an even bigger impact. Oh, 100%. I, I look towards, and I'll say this to the rookies now, I look towards Nick Moore and Ranger every week of getting suggestions and ideas, what to do on setups, how to get faster, how to be this. I mean, honestly, as the old saying goes, you know, if your setup feels perfect and you're not loose, you're not tight, you're slow. Mm-hmm. If you don't want that thing, you know, in my opinion, you want that loose as much as you can, but not too loose where you're pulling a nick from Iowa and you're dirt tracking it. But you want to have the perfect setup where you're going to compete with these veterans like Moore, Ranger, and Nick, and even Kamikaze, mm-hmm. where they know how to get this job done. They know how to get these wins. Yep. But, you know, as said before, there are 17 drivers. This is the biggest field we had ever in this league. And I think this is going to be a good season. Oh, I yeah. think it's going to be a great season, even better. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And what a way to get it started other than here at Daytona for the first race of the season. Let's go ahead and check check out them track details real quick. It is a a two-and-a-half-mile long track. And the bankings, the turns, 31 degrees. Trioval, 18 degrees. Where so many last lap passes are made entering that trioval, will we see another one here tonight? Uh, I I would say yes, depending on how big of the pack is. I mean, even if it's three cars, you can make that last lap pass, but it all matters on who's behind you. Mm-hmm. Are they going to risk it to further their position and get more points tonight? And hopefully those points they made tonight get them in the championship, not championship, in the playoffs. And, you know, it's like I said before, Nick tried making that move on me two seasons ago, and I accidentally put in the wall. Um, you made that move when we were a team at Penske, myself, uh, you, and... Oh, Taddy. Taddy. We all finished one, two, three, four. Yeah, yep. we all finished in that. Um, you know, the last laps, going to the stages, and at the end of the race, that's what's going to play as a factor of who's going to be really risking it for the biscuit to get those key crucial points tonight to make it to the playoffs and not to worry about a point buffer. Right. Yep. And another thing that's going to play a major factor in this race is this track. Yes, it is a super speedway, but it is a very narrow super speedway, only 40 feet wide versus the 60 feet that Talladega is. So that's going to play a big factor as well. You can't run that three. I mean, you can run three wide, but you sure as hell ain't running four wide like you can at Talladega. Oh, 100%. I mean, Talladega, it's fun to run that high line and run it two wide, even three wide. Hell, if you're lucky four. Mm-hmm. But here, I mean, even going to turn three, you got that little bump that's going to shoot your truck up, yeah. and trucks don't run customs. They run preset. Yeah. And... Um, hitting that little bump, that's going to shoot your truck up, and it's going to cause chaos, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And whoever, you know, if you get that big pack on the high line or on the low line, that's what's going to work tonight. That's what's going to, you know, get the trucks moving, and most of the speed's going to be there. But you also got to play the factor of the side draft, and, you know, depending on which lane people are in. If you got all the veterans around the high line, if I'm a rookie, I'm one of the veterans. I don't care about yeah. the other rookies. I care about... Who's got experience? Who can take me to the upfront? Who's going to take me to the lead? Absolutely. Something else that's going to play big that these drivers are going to have to remember is it is a long race. 100 laps here tonight. Stage 1 and 2, both 20 laps. Stage 3, 60. So in stages 1 and 2, they can make it the whole way. No pit stops. With stage 3, they're going to have to take three pit stops. And something that's going to play another big factor in this is the speed limit's only 50 mile an hour. So that's a huge difference, trying to get your truck woed up coming out of four to get onto pit road. And this is where a lot of speeding penalties, Daytona and Atlanta, a ton of speeding penalties coming onto pit road. Oh, 100%. I mean, especially beginning of the season, you're going to have all the jitters, all your bugs in your belly, you know, making you all warm and happy that, yeah, hey, I got a chance to compete for a win tonight. But that one speeding penalty, that can ruin your whole night. A uh, former champion and a former race winner, Smitty, we cannot count how many times on our hands he leads the race, he has a good pace, has good rhythm. But he throws it all away because he went a couple miles an hour over the speed limit and gets parts for a lap. You know, making that lap up back up, it's hard. And especially here, where if it's just yourself who's sped with your group of five, six, seven guys, there goes your whole race. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Nick experienced that a ton at Atlanta the last time we were there. Uh, don't accept that invite yet, Evo. Oh, I didn't get an invite yet. <laughs> so we're getting Same word. Thing. They just got done doing their qualifying. And Pierce Posse starting the season off strong, getting the pull. And we talked about rookies coming out here, maybe having that big chance of winning. And Buck Stopper, I told you, he was fast. He came out here and qualified second, old school third, and Nick grabbing fourth. Damn. Can we accept them yet? See, now, like I said before, right, uh, earlier in the street, mm-hmm. um, qualifying first, you know, getting that pull is going to be awesome. But, you know, I don't want to be the guy who's up front. I want to be the guy who's in that draft where I can save. Um, a couple of seasons ago, as we saw, I didn't have fuel mileage to finish one stage. I couldn't make it to the end. I had to sacrifice those points mm-hmm. to be someone lead lap. Yep. I think some of these guys, I think Nick, I think uh, Kamikaze, Moore, Ranger, all of them, even the rookie guys, I think some of them are just going to line up and get in the draft yeah. and not to worry about it. Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and you talked about that. Something that these guys are going to have to really weigh is are points more important or is not going a lap down more important? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, They're going to have to weigh those, and that's going to lead us into our next uh, segment here right before they start the race. Don't accept that invite yet, Evo. Um, our keys to victory. The number one thing that I had is you're going to have to be patient. It is a long race. It's 100 laps. That may not seem like a lot, but it's going to be. The second one is going to be huge with 17 guys. That big one is going to happen, and you're going to have to avoid it. You're going to have to keep your truck clean, not have to serve any damage penalty. And then that third one, like we were talking about, it has bit a ton of people. No mistake speeding on the pit road. Anything you'd like to add to that, Evo? Um, I'm the big one. That's the one that's going to be burning me the most if I was going to this mindset of racing tonight. I would be the worried one of thinking, who's going to, you know, we're good to accept those right. It's going to be a key factor of who's going to be the one who could possibly cause it or who's going to slip up. I think, honestly, that wreck's going to happen in stage one, unfortunately. But. Oh. Yeah, that's way game. oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely think it is going to happen early in this race. No doubt about it. But uh, um, but we are loading in there, getting ready to bring the first race of the season. I cannot wait. It is going to be a great season. 17 drivers in this season. I cannot wait. Let's get it started here. We're loading in. Real quick, Evo, your pick to win this race. My pick, I'm going to say it's more. More knows how to get it done on Super Speedways. Yeah. He, you aren't yeah. lying. You are not lying. But let's get it. We are loading in, coming to the line. Green flag is in the air. Pierce Posse getting the first pull of the season. He's going to get a great push from that 46 behind him. Or, I'm sorry, who is that behind him? Is that the 45? No, it's the 40. No, that's the 40. I'm sorry. It's going to take a minute, like you were that's talking helpful. about. Getting used to everybody's new car numbers. This is going to take a while. Oh, the 40 hitting the apron big time there coming through one and two. That's going to be something they're going to have to get figured out. There is no doubt about it. But Buckstop on that high line trying to get that going. He's got the double zero of the veteran more behind him. You know, I'm going out of two. Pierce kind of had that little gap. I, If I was Pierce... I would lift it up a little bit and trying to get that pack caught back up. So I got guys. Oh, they're three wide. Yeah, they are. They are taking no time at all going three wide. Like you're saying, that big one's going to happen big, and it's going to happen early, and they are showing that it's going to happen early. And now with that, Gordon's screwed. He doesn't have the draft, and that high line's working. Yep. Um, I don't know how that's working with all the trucks on the low lane, but the high line stays together. They can possibly clear this low line, but... Yeah, Buck Stopper, he has got one heck of a truck. Like I said, me and Jason were racing with him the other night, and he was he was out there. As you can see, he's actually pulling away from the pack there. Moore gave him one heck of a shot coming out of two. Yeah, how they're going three wide, and someone got in the ball or something. I just saw someone go drop back. Yeah, but 
they're not they're racing like it's a last lap. They're racing like this is for the break for the championship. They're not racing, you know, pack racing of saying, hey, we've got to calm down and cool it off. Mm-hmm. They're going full throttle. We don't care. We want that field position. We want where it's gonna matter at the end. Oh yeah. And these guys know, you know, this is a super speedway is we've got the twenty car way down on the apron there. But these guys know that this is super speedway. This is anybody's race. So they know this might be their maybe one chance of getting into the playoffs. Oh, 100%. I mean, I, I don't know if we're doing the win in your end format this year. I believe but, we are. Yes, sir. Um, You know, so if I was one of these rookies. I would have this. And if we have another super speedway like Talladega on the uh, schedule, I would have those two races uh, circled up. This is my guarantee to get in where I don't Whoa, really save it, play. 20. The 20 car hard oh. into the outside wall there coming out of th- uh, four. It looks like he's a little further right now. But look at that high line. You got Nick and Moore working together. Two veterans. Yep. More than capable of getting the job done. And Nick is cleared, but it looks like he's saying the high line. He wants that high line to get going. Yes, he does. Oh. And what a run it- by Moore. Making his return to next oh. car. And he is out here leading that lap, and here comes Nick behind him. Three wide going on the back stretch, and Moore is staying up high, but he looks like he's dropping back. Oh, here Nick. comes Nick. He, Nick's going to dive to that inside line, though. He wants Nick. Moore wants Nick, but Nick is looking down below saying, that low line's working. Yep. That's what's going to get me up front. But with, let's see, old school, not old school, God. Uh, Buck Stopper now in third. Yeah. He might be able to take that fuel and scratch that he's going for the lead he's working with more nick on this high line and unfortunately he's kind of screwed i don't know man that uh, when we were running with him he was getting that side draft working better than i have ever seen that side draft working so i think oh, he's going to use that a lot yeah they did i don't know oh nick's back into the wall oh gosh he's got that oh, 44 the 44 is going to make that pass and that is who is the 44 I oh, didn't have the 44 blue. written down. Uh, 44, 44. Um, G3, G's running tonight. Another crappy wild veteran who um, is running tonight. That's right. He is filling in for... Uh, who's he filling in for? He's filling in for Rice tonight. He was not able I, to make it. Prayers out to his family as his sister was in, a, I guess, a very bad car accident. So prayers out to him and his family from the next car family. But G Pre out here uh, running pretty good for him here tonight. Oh, 100%. G, especially like as we were saying earlier with the crafty veterans, G is a guy who knows who can get these crafty ones as well and the crafty top three finishes and race consistently. I don't know how many times I've ran with G in both trucking cups that G knows how to get up there when it's a few miles race. Oh, we got the 22 on the apron. The 22. Oh, oh, big one, maybe up front. We got some big action going on right here with Tennessee, and the 20s into the wall. Oh, he saved it somehow, but we got the 12 oh, way down on the buck. apron. Buckstopper oh. saves it somehow. Tennessee gave him a huge shot there coming out of four and got the 12 22. truck all squirrely. 22 tried getting back in the line. Kind of, kind of got a little better with Nick. If I was 22, I'd be watching for that guy. He he knows how to ruin your night very easily, as you know very well, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the 22 is driven by another one of our rookies there, James Snow. So these rookies are not wasting any time getting in here and battling these veterans. Oh, no. They, as Nick said, hey, we're the best there is. Mm-hmm. You know, come race us. We'll take you to school. Yep. But some of these rookies are putting Nick's word, uh, words back in his mouth saying, hey, bud, we'll take you to school. We'll show you how to get it done. Yeah. Yep. And the guy we're but, watching right now, that's Tennessee Titan. He is our defending series champion. He's out here starting the season off pretty strong. I know we're only about 10 laps in, but he's up here in the fourth position. Uh, looks like Nick's dropping to tail in the field. He does not want to get sucked in this chaos. He I don't blame him. I don't blame him. You can't he, afford the damage to your truck this early. You got to save your equipment uh, for the end. 100%. And let alone these guys, they don't have their setups in yet. No. They don't have their tires at the right PSI. Well, they, they, they should. Their, this is a um, custom setup. Oh, I thought it was preset. No, no, no. Uh, the, the shit. The restrictor plates are customs. And then uh, well, shit. 
the rest of the season is set up or sliders. Well, whoever's watching the stream here, my wild ass talk about, you know, three sets. Forget what I said about tonight. <laughs> but, you know, we have, we actually have a veteran leading. Yeah, we and do. I'm surprised about it. We got Ranger. Yep. I'm surprised Ranger is taking the balls and saying, I'll be the lead truck right now. I thought he'll make a veteran move. Make one of their, oh, they're against Curly around fifth. Are they? Um, yeah, a little bit. I'm watching from Ranger. I'm looking at the hood, and I think we got the 20 truck. Up in the high group, but you drop back down from Nick. Um, you know, I thought some of these veterans were making rookies run up front, make them run the run the race, mm -hmm. and you know, save fuel. I would have done that tonight. Oh yeah, and be like, okay, let's see how the rookies run against each other until I get up there. Yep. Um, looks like we got a couple trucks trying to make that high lane work uh, with the yeah, 20. Yeah, the 20 stepped out there, and that is the new rookie Jay Black. That is Jeff Black. And him and the other rookie, Topster, trying to make that high line work. They saw it working earlier. Can only two trucks get it to work this time? And where does the other rookie, Buckstopper, go? We've seen him have a fast truck here at the start of this thing. Does he get up there with the other two rookies? Or does he stay uh, like you were talking about, staying down low or up high? Wherever the veterans were, the majority of the veterans are in that bottom line. Oh, I, I think Buck's probably going to stay behind Nick. And just cuss around. I mean, it's I would look, as everyone would love to see that side by side action and clean racing. I think right now it's too early. Everyone's trying to save fuel and make sure they're the good to the end. I mean, the fuel window it's eighteen twenty laps. You can theoretically make it, you know, to the end of the stages. Right. But if you're leading or top three, you're going to be going oh shit oh shit oh shit. Yep. And they got 10 yeah. laps left in this stage. They are catching Gordon. He is about halfway through three and four right now, and the leaders are just now entering three. So by the time this uh, stage is done, they will have passed him. You know, if, if I'm Gordon and if I was in his shoes, I would take the risk right here of before stage end, come down pit road. Yep, try to and jump get fresh tires. Yep. But even then, he's going to go lap down, unfortunately, and he's going to have to hope more doesn't go lap down. You're having two trucks lap down, and if you're that one unlucky, you know, participant who gets lapped, you're screwed. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to work your way up through stage two, get up front, and hold it up there. Yep. And it looks like we got G. I was going to say, um, Brandon's back here without the draft. I'm not sure what happened to him in that 44. Neither do I. I mean, G, G knows how to get it done in Super mm -hmm. Speedways. He... He will work with anyone, no matter yeah. team alliance or not, or even manufacturer. Yep. If he feels like you're fast, he'll go with you. Mm -hmm. But I'm out in Tennessee right now, and he's kind of give, living, leaving a little bit of a gap with the rookies in front of him and thinking, hey, my race is not right now. My race is with two to go. Yep. This is all I'm getting my points. Yeah, no, I, th I think he's just, like you said, I think he's playing it safe here, trying to figure out how these rookies are going to race. This is the first race with everybody together. So it, just trying to feel how everybody is as they're trying to get that outside line working again. That's Buckstopper back there in the 12 and the 20 of Jay Black behind him. You know, those guys have been practicing together. They joined me and Jason the other day. So those guys definitely know how to work together. So it's going to be interesting to see if anyone has seen what they're doing and continues it as they just about went up into the wall, though. Oh, the 20's oh, into the I'm wall. Sad. Oh. He's going to keep oh, it going, though. He's real squirrely coming out of four on the outside of Topster and right there behind Buckstop. You know, if I'm if I'm Nick and I see them are in mirror that 20 and Troll Truck are working on the outside or they're being banging, trying to pass by each other, mm -hmm. I'll be furious right now. I'll be, come on, we have a chance to make a pass. Let's work together, get that high lane going. I mean, that's one thing I stress no matter what, when I was in Thor, when I was in SHR, when I was in Penske, work with your teammates, you know, no matter what, last lap comes, that's when all bets sign. And 51's making a move up high. He got a crazy yes, he run is. against Nick. He's going, oh, my God, he's up in the top Yes, he five. is. He is coming. And he has no help behind him. But here comes the 20 and Buck stop. So both of them coming up to try and help him. And it looks like Nick. Oh, Nick's going to oh, here, too. Oh, here comes the 51 of Topster. Trying to take the lead from Ranger. We're on the uh, hood of Jay Black. He's going to push him to the lead. 
And now we got we got we're coming to the lab truck, I think and um Gordon, that's a place factor. Is Gordon gonna get out of the way and go down the apron oh. and on the straight? Oh, save or? it twenty, fifty one oh, into the wall, twenty into one, the wall. Big one, big Nick one. going through the middle. Four wide, three wide. Tennessee's gonna make it four wide, heading into three. Oh, we oh, got contact the twenty, beating and banging. The, the twenty two oh, down 14. into the grass. He's gonna have to come back up in front of D Blood. He saved it. They're gonna keep it going. All of them keep it going straight somehow. Oh my gosh. How oh, did they just save that? No kidding. That is crafty, wild veteran work that you do not see of someone going down the apron, going into the turn, nevertheless, and not causing the big one yet. No, you are that not takes, wrong. That takes a whole my lot of skill and patience. And especially other drivers avoiding him. That took a lot of patience from these guys. And I think that's what's going to show tonight of all of them being patient until end of the race. Yes, it is, because uh, you see, you hear what happened to that 51. He took the lead for a split second, then all that happened, and he fell back to 10th. Uh, if, if I was in the shoes right now, I would be trying to figure out how can I get back up there. Yep. Oh, oh, 20's on the apron. 20's in the 22. Coming out. Yes, he is. Oh, the 20 oh. into the grass. The 51. Can the 20 oh, save it again? He's into the 51. Oh. The 51's into the wall. That is the rookie Tobster in that 51 getting door slammed once again. He's back up into the wall. Yeah, and now you have the 20 and 51 separated from the main pack. I, I think that might be 10th and 11th. They're going to be battling each other for that last... Um, Stage end points. That's what's going to play as a factor when it comes to playoffs. Yep. And we got Gordon up here as the leaders are coming up to him, coming out of four. If I was him, I would duck down in the pits and get fresh tires. This and... time. Yeah, real I quick. Say it real quick, let's yeah, take I a was... replay of that last save as they are coming to two to go. You can see here through three and four, they or I'm sorry, coming out of two. That they just got all kind of squirrely there coming into that trioval. Replay is in that top right. And you can see right there. I don't think I saved it in time. I did not. Sorry about that. I thought I hit the save the replay in the time, but I did not. But they are coming to one to go this time, Evo, as they have caught that one truck of Gordon. Yeah, now you got Gordon who's running that high line. That's going to play as a factor to these guys. who are going to make that move up to the higher groove, you know, Right now, they cannot make that move until they clear him. Right. I'm going to say, when Nick passes him and sees Buck uh, pass him, Nick's going to try to make that move. Nick's going to want to try to get as much of those points as he can. Mm -hmm. As you see Gordon up at the wall and almost, you know, door Buck. Yep. But we see Buck, he's already trying to make that high lane move and saying, hey, let's go. Come on. This is the last lap. Right. And, and no one's, oh, a 40 truck moved up. And he didn't have a saying, choice. Whoa. That 40 truck didn't have a choice. He was trying to push Pierce Posse, and he just, it was kind of an accordion effect. And where does Pierce go? Coming down the backstretch for the final time here in stage one. They're trying to get that outside line working, and Tennessee's up to second. Where did Tennessee come from? He's the man we're going to have to watch for. Him. Yes, he's the man he is. And he's, as he's backing up, he's going to try to get that late run. I don't think he's got the time. I, I don't think, think so. Ranger wins the stage, but we got two wide going in the back. Oh, people trying to scramble for that last couple of points. And it looks like the 88 just barely misses out passing the 22. Mm. Oh, no, they're so, they're so full throttle. This is not the end of the stage. Nope, that's the end of the stage. Oh, I'll say they're so full throttle in front. Is yeah, they're that still the going end of the stage, on or is this the last lap? This is the last lap. Sorry, I got bad information from the uh, race control. But Tennessee, save it, buddy. Right here in front of Pierce Posse. He got real squirrely trying to make it to the outside and cut back underneath Ranger. Pierce is out of gas. Posse is out of gas. We talked about fuel run being an issue. That two Don't truck is out. Gas too. Ranger's out. Ranger's out of the 24. That is going to get to Tennessee. Here comes Nick. Where does Nick go? Tennessee's going to win the stage. Nick second and Deep Blood third. No kidding. We talked about fuel Evo, and that pure uh, proved to be huge, as that happened the last time as well. 
but where we saw Romo running out of fuel and uh, top of others, but we saw once again fuel playing huge here in just stage one. Yeah, that's going to be a <laughs> going to the next stage and even the last stage. That's 60 laps, and that's 60 laps. You're going to hold God. You can make your run 20 laps. You know, I'm surprised Ranger, for how long he ran up front, he didn't drop to the back and just save a little bit. I mean, as we saw, we saw Pierce, Ranger, and a couple of the guys barely had enough to make it to the front stretch but run out before the line. Absolutely. And that's what – and that caused them points. That's what's going to play as a huge factor. Yep. Now, if I'm one of these guys, I will take just fuel, depending on my tires. We got Nick up on pole, and it looks like Tennessee got jumped by two trucks. Yes, he did. That 40 truck of uh, old school coming up there and taking second. And Nick taking first. Green flag is back out here in stage two. Now, exactly. these guys just saw what happened there in stage one at the end. Do you think they're a little more conservative with their fuel this time? I would hope. I mean, especially you got the crafty veteran Nick up front. He's looking for that old mojo of the winning ways in that number three truck. If I was Nick, I would let Tennessee go. As we see Nick diving down the apron, mm -hmm. um, letting people go, saying, hey, I'm not risking it right now. I don't want to be part of the big one if it happens. Yep. I want to avoid it, and I want to save. As he drops all the way to the back, and he's still on the he's apron. He's still what on the apron. On what is going on with Nick? Did Nick forget to pit? He forgot to pit. He's coasting it. Did you forget to pit? Yep, we are getting word that True Racer 9, Nick Trudeau, has forgot to pit. He is out of gas. We talked about no mistakes. That is a huge one. Indeed, and Nick's going to have to hope that, unfortunately, a caution happens or no one else goes a lap down. Yeah, that's his you only hope. Those? We see the rest of the field. They're stacking up. I mean, they're kind of racing in the back, but oh, Tennessee's look. My bad. The 40 car hard into the wall. I mean, it looks like he's losing the drive to G3 and Gordon right now, too. Yeah. As the leaders come to three and four, Nick finally got in his pit stall, and he's finally getting service. If I was Nick, I would have done fuel only. Get the hell out of there as fast as possible, yep. but don't engage the field. Right, yeah. Your tires aren't going to be that low. And looks like he's not even coming out of the pits yet. He's now there he's coming is. out. Now he's coming out. By. The pack going by, I would be scared about him, Nick. Oh, yeah. I would be hoping I don't go too down. And that's definitely a huge possibility with as fast as this field is going, and he's going to be all by himself back there. If, if I'm Nick, I would hope to God. Oh, we'll see about a lag spike going on. 22 truck drop back um, after drafting with Pierce. And Rangers slides in right in that gap. Um, if if I was Nick, I would hope the big one happens sooner than later. Right. I don't want to remain a lap down and possibly go two down. <clears throat> Absolutely. But with how, with how these guys are racing, they're able to save. Oh, save at 22. Looks like they're able to save it and keep going. But... It, it hurts to see Nick, I mean, let alone a crafty veteran who knows how to get it done, mm -hmm. let alone at super speedways. He makes the key crucial rookie mistake, not pitting and not taking fuel. Yep. But now we got Tennessee leading, and I don't think Tennessee saved at all when he was somewhat riding third behind Nick. But in third, you don't have to worry about saving. Being out front in here, you have to worry about it because you're the one that's using the most fuel, punching that hole into the air. Oh, 100%. And of looking at it, I mean, we got, let's see, who's... Let's see. Oh, 22. I thought he was coming to pit road. He jumped out of line, went down below the yellow line. I guess he just got real loose there. But I don't know. Deep Blood must be uh, pushing him pretty hard because he is all over the track. I probably. I mean, some of these guys, uh, some of the rookies, this might be the very first league they're running in, the very first season they're doing, you know, racing against others and they're going to think pushing is going to be the best way mm -hmm. you got to get that little bit of a gap to yep. truck in front of you because you don't know what whoa ranger him. making it three ride where did he get that run from i don't know if you're watching back there or not but he got one heck of a run and just I saw absolutely rocketed by d blood and that 88 and a 20 of jay black i saw someone that run <laughs> and it looks like more 
he's not part of that pack, uh, pack too. Looks like he's dropping back to Gordon and G. Yeah, I think they're just trying to get more people in this pack here as it looks like the 40 is dropping back to Nick. I think they're just trying to help each other out here. And, I mean, two trucks isn't going to be oh. enough to catch that big pack, but... Here's slid up, but we got side-by-side -side action going back with Ranger and Buck uh, going at the end of this lead field. Um, fouls them. Oh, by, save uh, it! Big push there by Ranger. Huge push. Jesus. They're getting all screwy, and it's not even the end of the stage again. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are just... That, their back They're bumpers going. are going to be caved in. Another big push from Ranger. Ranger's shoving Buck yeah, all he over. Is. Tell him Buck where to go. Oh, oh he yeah. gave him a huge push. Ranger making it three wide once again. <coughs> I oh, thought they were going to go three good. wide with the two, but they thought well, different. It looks like Ranger, I, if I was in Ranger's shoes, I would line up with Pierce. I would mm -hmm. get this line going and just save. I mean, yep. We saw both Pierce and Ranger run out of fuel before the end of the last stage. And as we see, Pierce is making East River back and forth. He doesn't know if he wants to go to the high groove or stay down low. Right. It was going to be three trucks on three. And you look to hope Ranger and Buck, you know, make that move. And 20 truck down on the apron going by pit lane. They're going to be three wide going to the tri oval. And Buck's trying to move up. But the 20 slowed him down. Give him a bumper. Man, yeah, is... several of these drivers have been doing that. They're, I don't know if they're getting loose off of four or what, but they've just been hooking hard left there, almost looking like they're going to go on to pit road. Yeah, I mean, I know Talladega, sometimes it does that to you, but uh, Daytona, that never really happened to me. But I don't know what these guys are running. I mean... As I said before, I love the loose um, setups. I love the loose sliders on some of the tracks, but tracks like this in Talladega, I ran as tight as possible so I can have that thing hooked on that yellow line. Mm -hmm. But now we got two packs separated where we got Ranger, Pierce, and 10, and I did it for Dale in front of his lead pack, and we got Buck leading the other pack. Um, they're more separated out, and I don't think they're going to have enough time to catch up to the leaders. No, and speaking of I did it for Dale, he has been up there constantly in the top five this race so far. He's I don't know he's not a rookie, is he? No, he, he ran last season and I ran a couple of races with him. He he knows how to get those consistent finishes, but as Nick, Ten, myself, and you said during pre race, those top three finishes are what's gonna be consistent. Top five is gonna be great, mm -hmm. but you want top oh someone like that one from I think it was a twenty two truck actually. So um, twenty two yeah, James No. Twenty two truck lagged out of the race. Unfortunately his night is done. Yep. It's unfortunate to see that. But now you got I did it for Dale dropping back to Buck, I think. He got kind of a gap where he wants the the other pack. He wants to be a four truck pack and make a lead make it pass for the lead. You think he's trying to drop back or do you think he cuz the 22 is up there with these guys. <clears throat> so I think maybe I, that screwed him up a little bit there. Maybe cuz I got the 22 truck on pit road right now. Right. Yeah, he uh, definitely lagged out. It sounds like I Dale was going full throttle and trying to catch up and he's back in that draft. Uh I, I, unfortunately, I have to say that the rear truck back behind him, they're not going to catch up on time unless he drops back to them. But he's getting all squirrely now, too. Yeah, no, the, this three, I'm on D-Blood right now, and these three back here, just the 20 and 88 are pretty organized, but the 12, it seems like his truck is set up really loose because he gets that bump from the 88, and he just gets all squirrely in front of him. Well, unfortunately, no one can... Run their car, run their truck like your boy Ryan Blaney can when he gets to the speedway. He gets all squirrely and says, oh, no, I want to be squirrely. Yeah. I want to be like that. He does have some crazy but, saves. There's no doubt about it. Oh, we, we got four, not even four, I would say three veterans who know how to get it done. You got three past champions in the top three competing for the lead right now. And Ranger is trying to make a pass Ranger. up. But you got Dale who's just riding saying, dude, Come back down. Yep. I'm not making a pass yet. Yep. But if I was Ranger, I would hope, you know, that 16 truck goes with me when I make my move. 
But something you got to remember if you're that 16 truck is at the end of stage one, that 24 truck ran out of gas. So do you want to go with them and have him run out of gas in front of you and screw yourself as well? You know, well, you even got Pierce in front of them who ran yep. out of gas. And I would have to say from them running the draft behind 10, I think 10 the one who's going to be hoping to God he's got enough fuel. I know last season he got himself a wheel and I mean, left pedals left. now. But I don't know if he's saving or he's going full throttle. I see Pierce leaving some more of a gap going to one. I think Tennessee, he's full throttle with right now. How he's many? not saving. Also, remember, we got to take into consideration. Takes a lap down. Right, yeah. They have six laps to go. So coming to five to go this time. So this is when people's gas lights and stuff are going to start coming on. So this is where I'm, it's going to start say, getting interesting. Yeah, we got Pierce making a move upside, but Rangers says down below. It's on the bumper of Tennessee. He didn't go up high. He thinks this, no, he did he not. He thinks Pierce went too soon. No, he did not. And four to go. So but, these guys, they're they're getting antsy. They're ready to go. Yeah, but now Ranger not going up with Pierce. If I was Pierce, I'll remember that. I'll oh, say, yeah. Hey, you, you left me high and dry. Why should I help you now? Yep. You know, I'll keep that as a mental note on the back of my head of going to the Sage End. Oh, yeah. This is, this is how he treated me. I'm not going to do the same thing. I'm going to go for a position. Yep. But now you got Dale. He's somewhat there. He's, you know, coasting it, but he's leaving a gap where he can get a run. He's just waiting to see who goes where and hopefully fills a hole of where they're not at. Right, yeah. Yep. And it somewhat looks like that three-truck pack is catching the leaders as, you know, second to fourth are keep playing shuffle positions of trying to make a run and drop back to fourth. Yeah, the 16, I believe, right now is in that catbird seat. If that 2 or 24 makes that move, that 16 truck will be the deciding factor on whether he goes with them or stays in that bottom line. If, if I was Dale, I'd look right here. We got and here oh, comes Pierce. Ranger. Ranger going to that Pierce outside. Here comes it. Pierce. Dale, he stays below. He's yes, he did. They're going to make battle it. battle the Chevys and Toyotas. Yep. Here they come. Oh, two wide race? out of four. Coming to two to go this time. But with the, oh, Ranger left. Ranger Pierce clears high them. Dry. And Pierce ain't going to forget that time. He no, sure is not just... going to forget that time. You left the manufacturer up high drive. Right? If I was Ranger, I would have made sure. No, Pierce, he... are you clear? Yeah, no, he's definitely not going to forget it that time. Because he got I screwed mean... once again and remains in fourth. Yeah, and as we said, free race this season. No teams, no teammates. Yep. And tracks like this, if I was running in a Ford or a Chevy, I would hope to God I had that manufacturer alliance of I got people to work with. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, the Rangers screwed Pierce, and Pierce is behind the Toyotas. Yep. If Ted gets a run, I guarantee it. Dale's going to go with him and try to push him to get up front. Copy. Right, yeah, and here we go. White flag is in the air here for stage two. Will we have more drama at the end of this one? The last time three drivers ran out of fuel coming to the end of stage one. Will it be another repeat here at the end of stage two? Or can Ranger have saved just enough to make it work this time? Because he was leading uh, the white flag, but ran out of gas, bringing them to the checkered. Got, and here comes Tennessee. We got separation of the alliance. Tennessee, a got... huge push from the two. And Tennessee to the lead. Is... Tennessee probably got himself the stage win again. I he think he did. Yeah. Here comes Ranger. Ranger going to the outside of Tennessee. Does anybody go with him? He does not. The 16th stays with Tennessee. Even... Tennessee wins stage Dale. two. And Dale Ranger second. second. Man. Oh gosh. Well... Now you got the Chevys and Toyotas back line up again at the start of the stage, depending how pits are going to go. Right, yeah. I think this is going to play a factor. I mean, Ranger, you left Pierce a couple times high and dry. You don't bring him up front with you. I, I would be scared if I was Ranger. I don't know. That will show my loyalty and respect 
to my manufacturer teammates and go, I'm worried about where my truck's at. I'm not worried about anyone else. Yep. Which hell, I don't I don't blame Ranger, but I would be scared of issues right now. I just pissed off mm -hmm. a league champion as well of saying, Hey, I don't care about you, I'm here for the win. Absolutely. And something big from this uh excuse me, from this stage is that three truck of Nick Trudeau is back on the lead lap. So he's going to, I'm sure, get back up there, and he is going to find his way up there to the front. Oh, I hope so. I mean, hey, don't, yeah, a lot hey, of don't good forget the pit this time, all right? I said to whip some on a shifter. I said to Nick in the uh, Discord chat, I said, hey, don't forget the pit this time. He said, I did, asshole. <laughs> oh, good to see the brotherly love is back in next car. Oh, yeah. But we got, we got green flag going. We got Ranger, who's kind of a little slow to start, but now we got Pierce catching back up on him. And we got somewhat of a group up lined on the higher groove, but now the lower one is pulled away. Yeah, that lower line has got that 12 truck. He is one heck of oh, a pusher. One push Gordon up in the wall and G3 as well. I think they kept it going, though, didn't they? Yeah, they're still all going. Yeah, they did. But now we got two guys <laughs> fucking the middle with more um, Pierce trying to pass him, but Buck's not letting Pierce go by. He's saying, no, screw you. I want this line. And Pierce, Pierce got shoved to the Pierce wall. Pierce got to the wall, and the 51 had nowhere to go behind him, Topster. And now and now Buck's shoving the 40 truck down the apron. Man, these guys are nuts. These guys are racing like they are coming to the checkered flag at the end of the race. I'm watching from Nick from back here. He's kind of coasting it. He's leaving a gap, but I don't know if he's losing the draft or not. That 51 truck's pulling away from him now. As we got Ranger going up in the higher groove, I don't know if he got chilled out or not. But these guys are they are going chaos mode. Yeah, they are. Ranger, like you said, in that high line, where does the 40 go? The 40's going to pick him up. I think Ranger was trying to get up there to that 20 car. But, or that 20 truck, but just couldn't quite get up there as now the two truck goes out there in the 40s down on the apron. He's going to come sliding back up into the 12, the left side of the 12, and they're all going to keep it going once again. Somehow, these guys are making some miraculous saves here, coming out of two and going into three. Yeah, if I was one of these guys, Nick, G3, Gordon, and 51, I would hope a caution comes out soon. They're spread out, and Gordon's racing the 51. They're not lining up together, not catching back on the draft while the leaders are kind of spaced out right now. They're not really, you know, bumper to bumper to bumper. Yeah, and talking about one of those guys that always finds himself at the front when it comes down to the end of these races, that is that double zero of more. At the end of stages one and two, he was nowhere to be found, but here coming into stage number three, he is up here in third battling on the inside of Ranger. So he has found his way back up there to the front, riding behind that 16 truck of I Did It for Dale, and of course our defending series champion, Tennessee. You know, I don't know what camera point of view these guys are running around, what you like to run around, but the one thing I love about Moore when he's at these tracks, he runs in the truck. Yep, he runs that interior. That POV from the interior. Yep. That's one thing I love about, and especially he knows how to hook oh. that truck on that yellow line of that as we got Pierce dropping back. Yeah, he got into the wall side, hard in that two truck. But it looks like he's getting back in the draft with that 20 truck, and they're going to be trying to work together the hell happened to, you? to get back up front. What the hell happened to you? He's probably focused on the again, let's be honest. So we're getting word that the alliance between the 3 and the 44... Nick dropped back to go get G Pre. So these guys are in the back. They're going to have to hope for that caution that comes out. I don't know if it is or not. We have yet to see a crash. These guys are beating and banging all over the place, but a yet to see a crash as there's more going to the outside, but nobody goes with him. Uh, I, I think more. He volunteered to drop back to uh, see how things are heating up, and he's going to try to cool off. He's going to. Drop back to the tail end and take a you know breather and take a relaxer of saying these guys are going nuts. Maybe it's not my time to be up here. We right. got uh, Ranger making a move on Buck for fourth place right now, and Ranger's trying to clear Buck, but it doesn't look like he's able to. It looks like they're going to be stuck side by side, and unfortunately, Ranger's going to drop back to that tail end. Yep. 
And it looked like for a second there I did it for Dale. It was going to jump to the outside of Tennessee, and D-Blood was all about it. But he tucked right back in, and I thought, hey, he's going to the outside that time. Nope, he's going to tuck right back in. So I don't know if he's testing it to see what kind of a run he needs to try to make that pass or not, but D-Blood is all about trying to get that high side working. It seems like it. I mean, he, you know, as I said earlier, Ranger not working with the Manufacturer Alliance, but it looks like Dale, he's testing the water out, mm -hmm. see how that run's going to go. But he's sicking on the back of Tennessee saying, hey, we're not teammates, but we have the same manufacturer. And I know in the game right now that Thor truck, it's a Ford, but in my mind, that's a Toyota as well. Uh oh, save I it. Not to cut you off, but there are three wide back there. The 24, oh, the 20, so, so and the nuts. two. I just saw someone, you know, unfortunately missed pit lane and got back up on the track, and it looks like he slotted back in, and that's good. And these guys are acting like it's the last lap. It's the Daytona 500. This is not the, you know, truck series 250. This is the Daytona 500. Yep. Yeah, they, and they're sure acting like it. It's ever since the drop of the green flag on lap one, these guys have been beating and banging, uh, making some incredible passes, some incredible saves. This, Like we said in pre-race, this is shaping up to be one of the best seasons ever in next car. And these guys are not uh, letting us down. And unfortunately, say this, it looks like more is at the tail end of that lead pass. <coughs> But I don't know if he's doing that. I've seen how screwy they are. He doesn't want to be part of that mess. He wants the things to cool off and, you know, make his way up through the field. But as we said, Moore knows how to get it up to the front of the truck, uh, up to the front of the field and compete for the wins. Oh, yeah. Especially at the speedways. Yep. I'm not worried about Moore one bit. I can guarantee you at the end of this thing, he's up there fighting for that top three, even and possibly have, have, a win. As they are going uh, three wide here, 16 three in wide. the middle, 88 down low, and three trucks going around the outside. That 16 truck, he That's must have got loose now. or something because he's going really slow. And we got four trucks on the iron roof. We got two on the lower. That 16, if I was him, I would slide up to the top. That top's got more trucks. That's what's oh, yeah. going to give me up front. And here comes Pierce Posse. Big block by Tennessee. Pierce and Posse Tennessee. goes to the bottom. What an undercut crossover move by Posse. What a move by Pierce Posse. See, now, if, if I'm Pierce, I'll be scared. You got the high line. So stacked up. More trucks up there than down below. But now you got the lower lane. Someone going back together as Mar trying to get down below. But you got Tennessee clearing Pierce. And it looks like he's going to bring Ranger down below, <coughs> too. And, and the 20 truck, too. The 20 truck's on the end. Yeah, he is. He's been doing that all race long. He's lucky he's not hitting that glitch that's down there. Oh, more up in the wall now, unfortunately. Um, fudge. Oh, man, more <laughs> falling back quickly. There goes more. More is going to have to hope that you can get back in that pack with, unfortunately, help. But it looks like Nick and G. Pree, they're too far away from Gordon and whoever's working with him. I'm trying to find him. Or in the 51 truck, they're the nearest pack nearest to him. I'm going to have to get lined up with them and hopefully catch that lead pack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Moore is definitely going to have to fall back to them. I'm not sure who's in. I think it's Gordon that's in that first pack, and I'm not sure who's with them as I'm riding around with Tennessee here. But let's take a quick replay at that move by Pierce Posse. It didn't work. He's back in third, but that was one heck of a uh, try. As they're coming through the trial, well, he's getting a huge push by that 24, and Tennessee slides up in front of him. He dives immediately down to the bottom in front of D. Blood in that 88. And he gave it everything he had there. There is no doubt about it. That was one heck of a move by Pierce Posse. And now we got Ranger dropping back. He looks like he got a little bit loose going into the trial. Well, and Pierce put his truck down that lower lane. And Ranger, fortunately, is back in that draft. But I don't know. I, I would be kind of scared about Tennessee right now. He's been the lead pack truck of this pack for the start of the stage three. Mm -hmm. I'll be scared about the field wireless. Oh, yeah. And I can guarantee but, you, he has got his eye on that meter. That is for sure. Oh, 100%. And, oh, let's see, a 20 truck shoving up Dale up in the higher room saying, hey, get out of my way. I want this lower lane. Yeah, and that's, I did it for Dale. I think he might be dropping back here to pick up Buckstopper because he knows that 12 truck is one heck of a pusher. Oh, 100%. 
if, if I was anyone, I would have that troll truck right behind me. It looks like he's a hell of a pusher, but if you're pushing him, he's got those moments where he slides up because this truck seems a little bit loose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got these guys doing the worm, going into the three, yep. trying to line up, but... For what it looks like, no one's going to Oh, move. the 12 gets door slammed into ball. 3. The 20 got loose, door slams the 12, and the 12's going to... Oh, the 40. The the More contact as the 40 tries to get around him. That is a huge, huge complications for Buckstopper as he was putting on one heck of a show up there in the top 5, top 10. And now he yeah. is one of those drivers that needs to hope for a caution. Yeah, same with old school. Both to him and the... Uh, buck, they're gonna have to drop back. I would say drop back to the other pack that's behind you guys yep. and try to line up. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be your best bet if there's no caution to catch up to this lead pack. It sure is, but uh, we're gonna take a quick break here, real quick. We will be back here in 60 seconds, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Ooh, Welcome back here as we did that new side-by-side -side live action. When we go to break, that's going to be the screen that you guys see. That is another big improvement that I made to these live streams. And the 20 truck way up the track. Wow. I was on him. I don't know what happened to him. He was running smooth. It looks like now he's got to come to pit road. As he is slowing way down, but he's not going to pit road. Maybe. Right. But as we are back here from break, let's go ahead and uh, show you our truck series commentators. You got me, Arnaldo9, and the Evo B. 
for this season stepping out of the truck coming up to the booth as you can see our names there on the bottom of the screen so like i was saying we ha i have made a ton of improvements to these uh, broadcasts not just for the truck series but for the cup series as well and I've, I'm looking forward to this season with all the improvements that I've made on this stuff, all the improvements we have made as a league. That, Like I said, and I will keep saying, this will be the best season ever for NextCar. Racing, I know towards the end of Nick's reign, you weren't streaming the end of the races, but one thing I look forward to every night when I was done racing the truck or cups was your streams on, especially when I started dominating. I started watching your streams and started taking notes on how other drivers ran their races at that track and added to my notes. And especially how tonight's going and seeing how the stream is mm -hmm. and how like, every season somehow you pull one out. Oh, and they're coming to pit road. pit road. They all are. Got, the only one staying out steep Dale blood. Tennessee, save it, buddy. Oh, he got real loose coming on to pit road. We got four of the lead pack. I think one stayed out. Yeah, D He's blood. D blood in that and eighty-eight. Twenty, twenty trucks on pit road too towards the tail end, but that's not going to play as a factor if he only takes fuel. But you're going to have to take tires here. I would to say it's always they're all taking four and fuel. Got that fifty-one truck of Topster coming as well. The problem with that fifty-one truck is he was running back there with Gordon and more. But he was the only one to come yeah. in that pack, so he's going to be all by and, himself out there. And we got Nick and G ending pit lane, too. We yep. got some of the pack, some of the small packs joining in. And we got Tennessee beating Pierce and all yeah, that around did. pit lane. Um, it's going to be Tennessee, yeah. Pierce, Dale, and then uh, Ranger. And here Tennessee comes the 20. I'm going to say Tennessee might be getting freight trained when yeah. he's back up to speed. Look at the gap that he's going to have on these guys, and those guys are going to definitely get together. As here comes that 88, where does he go? Because he's going to be flying. So. And he got sold the back end. More Gordon. Uh, who else? Uh, G, G got his feeding penalty. G's still on pit lane without Nick on it, or G must have lagged out. G's eggs in Kalina right. as Buck came down. But now you got three trucks on pit lane, and Tennessee, he's catching up to whoever's on pit lane. So Gordon, Moore, Buck, unfortunately go lap down now, or they're getting passed for a position, I think. And you got G, who's in one and two. Oh. Oh, I got Pierce passing. He didn't pass. Uh, Tennessee with Ranger. He got stuck on the back bumper, and he's trying to make that pass too, but gets left up high and dry. And let's see. You got G3, unfortunately, just sitting there. Well, what happened? But yeah, while we were uh, away there for a second, like you were saying, Pierce Posse making that pass for the lead, Dale going with him. Those guys are tired of seeing that four truck up in the lead. Oh, I'm saying as we got G3 riding that high line, no one leaders coming up. His race is out with them. His race is save the first truck, a lap down. Yep. Where he can get back on the lead lap and compete for that win. Um, as you said, it's unfortunate to see the original driver of the 44 truck out with family issues. And our thoughts and prayers with him. Absolutely. But G's doing his best and his damnedest to keep that 44 truck competing and get most points as he can. And he slides in that draft. I think G, unfortunately, not unfortunately, G's going to be the first truck to go on lead lap. Mm -hmm. And we got Nick for what it looks like. He's by Nick's himself, by too. himself, yeah. Yes, he is. And we got the 40 truck by himself, but he's got Buck. It looks like the 88 behind him and Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these trucks are spread out now. They're not tight, compact racing. I think our racing is now 
So the soul was the two, the 16, the four, and 24. Absolutely. Now it's a four truck battle. Yeah, this race is, like you just said, it's a four truck battle, but it's not only a battle for them, it is a battle of the fuel mileage. Who can try to get that fuel mileage to last a little bit longer than everybody else? We saw them run out of fuel coming to the end of stage one. Stage two, we didn't see anybody really run out of fuel. So it's going to be trying to find that sweet spot of that fuel pedal and trying to conserve and try to, because you get about 18 to 20 laps of fuel on a run. So it's all about trying to push it to maybe that uh, 21st, 22nd lap. So you can get a little bit of an edge on everybody. And maybe you can make this in, I mean, you're still going to have to pit three times, but that way you have enough coming to the end of this one. Yeah, and I, if I was to say, if I was to loop back with Pierce, Adele, Tenet, Ranger, I will let G3 go by and use him as a draft play. Yep. You know, your guy, you know, the race tonight's between you four. Mm -hmm. I would say let's create a fair advantage race of letting G go by, but I doubt they're going to, well, I was probably going to say no. <laughs> I mean, hell, if I was in fourth or third, I'll say, no, screw you. You're up front, you're leading. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking that to advantage. I'm saving. You're not. Yep. But since everybody's pretty spread out and everything, let's go ahead and do a quick run through the field. Up here in front, you have got that two truck of Pierce Posse. He's been running a pretty smooth race so far tonight. Kept his nose clean. He's up here in uh, first. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, he's up here in first. He finished uh, stage two and third. So he's definitely getting that truck figured out here and getting her uh, reeled up for the end of this thing. But he's been doing a pretty good job. He had that big move on Tennessee. It didn't quite work out there in stage two. But he had a heck of a move and definitely gave us a big highlight. 100%. And we got, I did it for Dale up front here too. He was one of the guys we did not mention during our pre-race of who's going to play as a factor in tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we got... The Wildy veteran and Ranger still in the top five, in the top four, matter of fact. And as we, again, as we said, top three finishes is what's probably going to be the most consistent thing you're going to have to try to do oh, week yeah. in and week out. I feel like the top three right now, the top three drivers, if people are going to be circling, this is my opponent, it's going to be, unfortunately, Pierce, Tennessee, and Ranger. Those are going to be the three out of four who are going to be competing for that top three. Yeah, my, I, it's definitely going to come down to these four here in this race. Unless we get, like we were talking about, avoiding that big one. That's still, you know, something you're going to have to do. But these guys are starting to get pretty spread out here that I don't think that big one's really going to happen. No, I, I don't think so either. Unless something <laughs> happens to their front pack or if something happens between them. I think that's where the wreck's going to happen mm -hmm. or the other guys out the back as we got more the 51 and Gordon finally working together uh, to get back with speed and trying to catch back in front of them as we got the 20 truck riding by himself and let's see where's who's in his back we got D-Blood, Buck and the 40 truck so we got three trucks and three trucks you know trying to catch up but I was a 40 truck I would tell my pack hey let's drop back you know, to more than them, work together, it's six trucks against five, mm -hmm. and pick up that 20 truck. That becomes seven. You have ha majority of the field with you running up front. Right. Yep. And, you know, G. Pre, he's fifth in this lead pack. He is a lap down, but he, he could play a huge factor in this race on who wins. You know, that four truck of Tennessee or the 16 makes that move, and G. Pre's close enough to get up there and work with him. He can make, you know, the outcome of this race. Oh, 100%. But from what it looks like from the last couple of laps that I've been watching, these trucks up front, they, G's been laying back. G's been and conserving. And there goes the he's 16 to the up. outside. Uh, I Nobody think he went. Oh, he's into the wall. Oh, uh, he's up in the wall. Is he? I think he might have, I think he might have a flat tire. It doesn't look like it. I, I'm very familiar with those flat tires. The truck just wants to kick out. I don't think so. I think he's still full throttle. I don't know. His truck does not look to be handling all that well right now. It, 
from what it sounds like to the engine, he's so full throttle. Yeah, he's he not is. going out pit lane. So I would say maybe he got loose um, coming up the, through the turns, Ron, and just couldn't hold his line. Or maybe he hit that glitch, because there is that glitch right there as you're heading into three. So that might have been what it is. Maybe. And you but hate to see that, truck... because he was up there this whole race. Yeah, and now, the, unfortunately, that four-truck back becomes three. We got Tennessee trying to make a move up front. Yep. Or actually, no, it looks like he's dropping back to pick up his manufacturer teammate, knowing I have a better chance with another Toyota than mm-hmm. with a Chevy. Right. Well, we'll see. He's slotted back behind G. Maybe Ten and G are trying to work together and be like, you know, G, throw me a bone. Yeah. Help me out here. Yeah. As we see G, he's dropping back too. Yeah, G's just, he's he's saving fuel. He's racing a, uh, he's racing a Brandon got, race right now. He's trying to save as much fuel out, as he can right now. We got someone coming out of pit lane that I just saw. Um... I see who it was. I switched my camera too soon. Yeah, Nick's still out here uh, by himself. He's The I leaders think, are catching up to him. That was Nick. Nick came out of pit. No, it wasn't Nick. Who just came out of pit lane? I think maybe you saw Nick and you thought he came out of pit lane. Because I'm not uh, seeing maybe. anyone, you know, getting up to speed or anything. But uh, I'm watching from Moore's point of view. Let's say we got a four-truck pack trying to work together. And more, uh, the 51 and Gordon are trying to catch up, saying, hey, let us play, too. Let us race with you guys. You can catch up front. Yeah, we're, I'm riding um, on uh, more right now, and it definitely looks like they are catching that four-pack ahead of them. Oh, more uh, hit the apron. Save it, buddy. He's going to slip up, but, you know, it's always good to have someone like the 51, a Tobster, behind you who's still going to push you and not try to pass you because he knows that's just going to slow him down. You know, but Gordon's yeah, got to get back up there on that back bumper, Tope, sir. If they are going to catch this four pack, he's got to get up there and push. Yeah, and it looks like, um, gee, he wants the Toyota's high and dry. I think I want to help the manufacturers more now. But it also looks like, um, 10 drop back to Dale because of manufacturing lines. You know, so we got, we got some manufacturer going, uh, yeah, I'm going to work with you. I'm not going to screw you over. Mm-hmm. But we also got some guys who are going, I'm going full throttle. I don't care where I'm at. Right, and that's interesting because, remember, there's no teams this year. So that's very interesting to see these uh, team al- or the manufacturer alliances still being a thing, you know? Oh, 100%. And matter of fact, we've seen, um, you know, Tennessee, Dale, working together. That's part of our Toyota manufacturers, and there's not that many Yodas out on the field. It's mostly dominated by the bow ties, and you see, I think it's just one Ford out there, too. So if I was some of the, if I was the Ford and the Toyotas, I would create that alliance of saying, we're outnumbered, you know, 10 to 1. Mm-hmm. We need to work together. Yeah, and this three-pack of Moore, Gordon, and Tobster, they're not really working all that well together right now. They're getting a little split back, but here comes Tobster now. But yeah, gordon has he's got to get his front bumper on the back of Tobster if they are going to catch that four-pack, because pretty soon that four-pack is going to start pulling back away. Yeah, they're going to start pulling back away, and then you're going to think, what could I have done mm-hmm. later tonight? You're going to think, what could I have done to change my results from tonight? And that can be one of them, as we see, as I'm watching from Pierce and Rangers' point of view, gee, they're somewhat catching up Nick, and Nick's, I think, he's trying to get himself comfortable of, if I go lap down, I my race is G now. I got to race against G3. I cannot race against the leaders. I got to keep my track position. Right. But if I was Pierce, I would use Nick as a draft buddy. Save fuel. Oh, yeah. Yep, it's going to be interesting to see where Pierce goes as we're going to jump on his hood here to his roof cam right now and see just what he does. He's going to use Nick for the draft. Nick's going to go high, and that's going to leave the bottom open here for the leaders. Actually, all three will make it past the two leaders and G. Pre. Yeah, it looks like Nick, he wants to get back to working with G, get back on fuel saving but he's not dipping down below to do it i think he might have missed this draft window 
But we'll take he's staying in it for now until Deep starts pulling away with the, the leaders. Right, yeah. And here comes the pack behind him. I did it for Dale in Tennessee. They're starting to make a little comeback here on Nick. They're going to start sniffing his draft here in a little bit. Huh. Maybe. I mean, he's still got two trucks up front. He's not really helping out with the leaders. He's just coasting. He's fuel saving. Yeah, he's that's all he's home. doing. And he's... Go ahead. Go on. And getting word from uh, that uh, number three camp, that really uh, irritated that three driver. He dropped back there to help G, but uh, G did not help him. He was all worried about saving his fuel and everything, and that really hurt that three truck. And, you know, we're getting word from them that... Uh, they're not too happy about that. That he oh, stepped out there to help him and nothing helped them from that 44 truck. I I would be upset too if I was Nick. I mean, um, of being good friends with Brandon and Nick, I know them two worked together. Mm -hmm. Both of them were teammates at HMS. Yep. And, you know, when Brandon went to JGR, he still worked with Nick at Super Speedways. Um, Nick knows he can rely on Brandon, but with Brandon doing that to him, that's kind of sticking a middle finger yep. to Nick of saying, you know, we're buddies, we're brothers, mm -hmm. we share setups, we do this together. But as you see, Nick gives that middle finger back and says, that's cute, but I'm going to work with the true leaders right now. Yeah. I'm going to help them. Yep, and he's, I think, hoping that they leave G Pre in the dust here. Yeah, as we see Nick making a move on the leader, trying to get that lead lap back. Maybe he is still trying to help out Gio, saying, hey, Oh, 24 leaders. doors him. Ranger hit the bottom apron, coming through three and or one and two there, and got it up into Nick, and that's going to slow him down a little bit, but Pierce Posse trying to help himself here. But there's those three trucks, and that's going to possibly give the lead here to Tennessee. But now we got the four truck. We got Brandon behind that higher groove. Maybe Brandon... Maybe G is taking that note of saying, hey, if this works for Nick, you back on lead lap this way. Oh, we got the cars coming to pit road into two. Pierce Posse road. into the inside wall. They, I don't think anyone behind them knew they were coming to pit road, and somehow they all hang on to it. I thought for sure we were about to get our first caution. I thought so too. I mean, but also we got Brandon with his group. Yep. This one has some bit of miscommunication. Or Nick got left out. High and draw again. Yes, he and did. Nick didn't know. But it's a wait and see game. As we see here, hopefully no no one got speeding penalty. I didn't see how they came in. Are you in the game chat with these guys? Um I'm going to have a real quick with a good camera. Oh, okay. Uh, we got G coming out. Maybe he took fuel only to pass the leaders. And we got the leaders back up in the pack. Yep. But depends on how it's start pulling away. Yeah, and Pierce Posse, even after getting into the inside wall there, comes out with the lead. 16 of Dale behind him, the 24 Ranger. Oh, 16 on the apron. He's spinning. Oh, he almost won it. Tennessee took a good action of avoid him going back on the track. Yeah, he did. And he's going to take the lead. How did Tennessee just get that done? Uh, no. One problem with That's that, it. though. They are lined up behind him, and they are going to blow by him. Yeah, unfortunately, but Tennessee is going to be open and praying that he can catch up to G, get some one of that speed back. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know G was that far. Ahead. No, G's way out there. Yeah. Yeah, I I was to say, Pierce, Dale, and Ranger, they're going to blow by, as you said, they're going to have to blow by him, and Tennessee's going to blow high and dry as well. Or if you're Tennessee, do you throw a big block here? You know, as you see the twenty Two. truck coming off a of pit road. Too big of a risk, I would have to say, to do that. Yeah. You know, you got your second to last pit stop in. You got one more to go. Yep. I would have to say, if I'm Tennessee or Pierce or Ranger, try to conserve that left side. Try to save much of that rubber you can. Come down pit road, take a full tank of fuel, and only right. Try to play that position game, but even then, you're still going to get blown by. Yep. As Tennessee jumps up high, knowing he's going to get freight train and yep. just catch the draft. And that's a smart move. You know, you know these guys are probably 10 mile an hour faster than you. Just let them go and dive behind them and hope you get that draft. I'm saying that. It looks like, is that G and Nick getting back together? Eh, probably I not. <laughs> no, it looks like a G's catching Nick. Yeah. As we got people coming off the lane in front of the leaders. Yeah, that, that got sketchy there. 
So, we might get that big one as Gordon's coming down. He's leaving pit road right now with Buck Stopper behind him. But these guys are getting pretty antsy. They know those laps are winding down here. So we may get a first caution of the night, but I'm surprised that we have not yet had one. Well, we probably are. I mean, oh, I see Pierce going up high, and Dale is showing up. Oh, no, never mind. But let's go ahead and take a look at what almost brought out our first caution coming to pit road. As you see, the 24 of Ranger must have had no idea that they were pitting and just obliterated the back bumper there of that two truck and put him into that inside wall right there. Get, trying to get slowed up, Pierce is in the two, and Ranger just had no idea. And he just about brought out our first caution of the day. And that is really what G. Pre and Nick need. Oh, and the 24 oh. Rangers in the outside. He's spinning. The 24 Ranger into the outside wall, spinning on the inside. That is going to bring out our first caution of the night. That's what's going to save Nick and Brandon's bacon. And that, yep. from the leaders. that has just oh, saved their race. Caution flies as they're racing back to the line. Ranger was putting on one heck of a show up there in the top four. We're getting word that it was a lag spike that brought it out. That is why it is a caution. And for only one car spinning, it was a lag spike bringing out our first caution of the night. And you know what it means with this caution? That playbook you had in mind of tonight if we went Throw it five, out. That's out the window yep. now. Throw you're it out. To come out. That's going to be coming out pit road. You're either going to take fuel only, risk it, risk it on your Is tires, G or take two and fuel. Is anybody alive now? So we're getting word that nobody right now with that caution coming out is a lap down. So all 14 drivers here tonight are restarting on the lead lap. But let's go ahead and take a look at that caution as they are coming out of turn two. As you can see them right here, Ranger was running fine and then a lag spike right here. I don't know by who because on our end it doesn't show up, but he just gets into that outside wall and spins it and goes down to that inside. And now with this going on, there might be some strategy. If guys took fuel and they think they can make it, they can stay out. But I don't know, that, that right side gets chewed up a lot. Same thing, even with the left. Depends on who's going to come down and try to risk it. The only thing about tonight's race that's different from the others, there is no choose cone rule tonight. No. The only leader can decide if he goes up high or low, which looks like Pierce is staying out or he might be faking them out. And, the Jordan Field is going to be coming down uh, to get fuel to guarantee they can make it tonight. Oh, we uh, do. Buck. The Buck, we well, Buck, Buck Stopper had now. just left. He had just come off pit road right as that caution came out. So he's pretty much probably solid. But it's going to be That's interesting, like you said, that leader being the only one that can choose his lane is we're going to be on the 88's pit stop here once he gets around the two. Good God to see who has the big run off of pit road and who will be the leaders it looks like the two of pierce, pierce. posse he definitely took a big gamble dale second and uh, tennessee third so pierce posse yeah. once again coming off of pit road i think he took a big gamble it's going to be interesting to see if it'll la uh, make it to the end i think so too and if you i'm it to the end or you still got to pit one more so we're getting word that these guys are good to the end. Now the only thing is that I'll be worried. Oh yeah, fuck. I mean, only three. I don't think. I don't think they're gonna be able to go this time. I think they're gonna have to burn one. Um, only thing I would say that's beneficial to Buck and Pierce is that the Toyotas they're uh, separated. They're not together. Right. Yeah. Uh, if everyone would have pit it, if I was Pierce, I would have made sure mm -hmm. whoever that Toyota was, if he came out third, I'm lining up in front of him. I do not want Manufacturer Alliance together. Nope. And they're going to have to burn this one. Not majority of the pack is caught up yet. Yeah, no, the, they are coming right now to 13 laps to go. So they are good by five laps of fuel. If this thing does go into overtime, which it is Daytona, it is a super speedway, so it's very possible we do see overtime. 
but this has just changed everything. As you see, the two trucks in the back are now caught back up. That is Nick and G. Pre, two of the veterans that know how to get it done here on the restrictor plate race. They will be going green this time, but before they go green, we're going to step away here real quick for a quick 20-second break, and we'll be right back here, and you will not miss any of this under caution action as we will stay side by side. 10 bucks, Toyota wins. Here they come for what could be the biggest restart of the night. Can Buckstopper, who stayed out, make it pay off? Green flag is back in the air here at Daytona. 12 laps to go. Buckstopper clears the field and brings the 16 of I did it for Dale with him. The 24 Ranger giving a huge push on that inside line. And the top three clear that outside line. Yes, he did. Tennessee, Tennessee left that two truck all alone on that outside as everybody's trying to get single file. Dale down on that inside. He better be careful coming off a of two like that. He will get loose in wreck it as Gordon's bouncing back and forth out there. Inside line to outside line. As you see Nick back there in that three truck all by himself pushing somebody. Oh, he was pushing more. But here they come, the first nine trucks all single file. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and if I'm that 51 truck, I do not want that 24 behind me. We oh, have no. seen how aggressive Ranger has been with his pushes. I do not want that truck behind me. No, sir. No. If anything, I want the truck in front of me. Yeah, for the race. absolutely. Make that move fast and... As you see that 20 truck trying to get that outside line to work. That's uh, one of the rookies, Jay Black. Nobody's going with them. Oh, Gordon's into the outside wall coming off of four. Everybody's going to clear him. He's going to get back into the wall coming into trioval. He's going to hold it up high, though, and more and everybody else is going to get by him. As you see, I did it for Dale. I don't know if he got pushed to the outside or if he tried the outside, but whatever it was, it was not a smart move, and he's going to fall back to fifth as the 20s into the outside wall again. He's back into it, coming through one and two. How many to go? At ten laps to go here in the first race of the new season, season six. I cannot believe Next Car has been around for six seasons now. It is absolutely insane, but one of the biggest seasons yet, and this is only the first race. Very interesting, you know, for the rest of the season and see how all these guys run against each other. Mm -hmm. You know, tonight, tonight's race usually holds in my zone of how you can feel of racing against someone else and see, you know, if they can, you can race them clean for the rest of the season or hold a grudge. Right. You know, Nick, Nick held a grudge on me during season four, I think, about what happened at this same exact race of how I raced him. No matter what, tonight's race is going to play a factor in that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And I know some people that are not going to be happy about the finish of this race. That is the 20 truck and that uh, one truck of Gordon in the one and the 20 of Jay Black. They are out in the back there all by themselves after something happened. As you see the uh, Nick in that three truck trying to make that outside line work. Moore went with him a little bit, but then he left Moore all alone on that outside. And that is going to definitely irritate more. Two veterans, and 
you know, two hard-headed veterans. And more ain't going to forget that. As Nick is all over the back bumper of that 40 truck of old school. And there goes Moore back to the outside. 88 got loose underneath them. Almost door slammed them. But they're going to... Oh, Moore with a big move to that inside line. Trying to fill that gap. And that's going to force the uh, that white truck. I'm not sure what uh, the 44 there of G. Pree. He's going to have to make an evasive move. Ranger back into the outside wall. Coming through three and four. He tried to jump to the high side line. Over corrected it and went into the outside wall. And here comes that three and a 40 truck of Nick and old school. Uh, we got more in that high line. He kind of getting left out. And Nick jumps up with him saying, Seven I got faith in right? you, brother. I, I will be with you no matter what. As Nick and Moore jump down in front of G, trying to get that pack going. I'm saying, hey, we have a chance working numbers, not just by ourselves. Oh, yeah. But like we talked about, and it keeps coming back to this, that no team, no teammates means no commitment. These guys are going to be selfish here. It's going to make for one heck of a finish here. As, oh, more back to the outside. Major scuffling going on. Three wide here going into three. The 40's going to hit that apron. Moore's going to get into the outside wall. Moore's going to fall back as Nick is going to try to make that outside line still work. But the double zero of Moore is going to definitely get the worst of that three wide action as he is going to lose the draft of the lead pack. What a run Moore was having. He was up there in the top three at one point, and then he kind of fell back a little bit there. I don't know if he fell back to try and pick up somebody, but just once again, not the finish he is going to look for. And Ranger and Nick, two of the probably good friends of the league, are going to try and get that high side working together here. And they got G Pretty back there with them, thinking we can get this going, we can get this train rolling and catch up to the leaders. You know, we still have time. We still have opportunity to go for this win you know oh you yeah get other people who work with us yep and we you talked about it evo you said that it might be a rookie coming out of this one with the win well guess who's leading one of the top rookies of this series and that is buck stopper in that 12 truck with five laps to go can he hold off the other rookie tobster or is the two-year veteran peer actually he might be a three-season veteran uh, up there can he get up there and take this one from the rookie as Pierce has led quite a few laps here tonight yeah I mean the top five eight, hell top ten it's mixed with rookies and veterans it is you got the two rookies together no one they have a chance to stick bumper to bumper oh and uh, not taking a chance but Pierce Pierce got it one almost getting screwed going yeah he four. did I would take it yeah, that almost got ugly because he could have lost it there and slid up into Buckstop and took them both out. And, you know, we still got actually going back. Nick and Ranger trying to get that higher groove to work. Nick drops out in front of the 88. Leaves Ranger high and dry. You know, Nick was saying he got pissed off earlier. What happened to him about it? Oh, yeah. But he just did the same thing to Ranger. Yep. As we see, but here comes Ranger. Up. Yeah, D Blood slid up just a little bit there, and that opened up the door there for that 24 truck of Ranger. And here comes Ranger and G Pre making that move. And Nick, he's catching back up. Nick. He's got the run. He's going up high, but he doesn't got help. He doesn't Ranger, have help, but here comes Ranger. There. Ranger, big push. That might put Nick into the wall. No, Nick's going to save it. And he's going to clear the 40, and he's going to. Oh, big save coming off of four. Coming to three to go. Nick. Three to go. Nick Nick is taking chances of making passes when he can. And he, he knows. These are chances and moves he has got to make if he's going to get up there. And here comes Ranger. Nick. Ranger with a big run. Nick, where does he go? Does he stay with the defending series champion Tennessee? Yes, he does. He's going to stay with Tennessee. Two and a half laps to go here in the opening race of the season. Ranger's going to fall back in there behind Nick. Big move by I did it for Dale as he's going to take back third. They are side by side right now for the lead. No, nope, Pierce is going to drop back down in there for third. Oh, you got manufacturer. I don't know, not even manufacturers. You got the manufacturers divided. You got Chevy Yoda, Chevy Yoda. You know, you got the other Yoda. Bat Pretty much playing the card. Dale Sr. playing a blocking game, hoping that someone gets a win and keep one of these guys who are the crafty veterans who can come in week out, week in, to get those wins. 
But, you know, as I said before, we got two rookies, first and second right now. If I was in second, I'll be more than glad. We that's a statement going into the season. Oh, yeah. Us rookies know how to get it done. Yep. Y'all are coming to the white flag this time, right? Yeah, you know, when we were talking in pre-race, you'd mentioned that rookies could definitely get it done. Well, I was talking about Buckstopper having one of the fastest trucks for this race, and he is going to lead them to the white flag. Can Buckstop get it done here for the rookie class? Remember, we are having that Rookie of the Year award. So will Buckstop be able to hold him off, or will his buddy Tobster in that 51 behind him make a big move? And where does Pierce Posse go? If he does make a move and Pierce Posse goes to the outside, he's going to get a big push from I did it for Dale. He's going to get to the outside of that 51 truck as they're going to head in side by side into turn three. We got a tandem drive there, but we also got Tennessee catching up. Maybe he can play as a factor, but I doubt it. I think oh! the rookies are going to secure one and two. I think we got Tennessee. I think Topster down. just saved it there for the 12, and he is. Buck Stopper comes in as a rookie, holds off Topster, and takes the lead, uh, the win. And I think Topster and I second. Think, I think Tennessee got third. I was gonna say I think it was Dale. I think Dale barely beat him by a margin. I don't know. That's going to be close on who got third, but what a win by the rookie in that 12 truck, Buck Stopper. What a run. Oh, almost a fake. Who got third? I did it for Dale or Tennessee. And we are getting confirmation that the uh, top three were Buck Stopper. The 51 of Tobster. And then I did it for Dale grabbing third. Just beating out Tennessee. Wow. What a Man, finish. That's like, that is like a Nick <coughs> Craven, a Kurt Busch finish you want to see. The Kevin Harvick, Mark Martin finish going to the line of being literally a uh, tenth of a second or even Can you a tell thousand. those guys that I'm going to invite them into this party? Uh, I don't think Tobster and them added me, so tell them to add me real quick, please. But man, what a finish! And what? Yeah, top three. Who got fastest lap? And you Jay can. Jay Black got fastest lap. Yes, he did. Jay Black fastest lap of the race. We're gonna go ahead and leave that lobby. We're gonna head into this, and we're gonna invite the top three finishers here into this party, and we are bringing back. The post-race interviews, that is making its return as well. But let's go ahead and get in here and let's get our top three finishers in to this party. So I don't think I'm friends with anyone. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm friends with uh, Buckstopper, but I don't think I'm friends with any of the other top finishers. But while we're getting them into the party and everything, we're going to cue the intermission and we will be right back here once we get them all into this party. What's up, guys?
right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here for the post-race interviews, and we are going to get it started with the rookie who pulled out an unbelievable finish, grabbing the win. What a job by Buckstopper12. What's going on, buddy? Yes, sir. Now, we practiced the other night. Did you take anything from that practice and bring it into the race tonight? The night helped me uh, learn how to um, how these trucks act in the draft. Uh, it's a little bit different than a cup car, so uh, I was able just to kind of hang out and, and do some draft, and that late caution helped me out a little bit. And then, of course, I got to stay out, so once I got out front, I just rode the yellow. Absolutely. Now, what kind of a strategy, a strategy did you run tonight to make it to where you didn't have to pit when that fi uh, only caution came out? Well, to be honest with you, I got put in the wall a little earlier in the race, so it threw me out of uh, the pit stops with the uh, leaders. So I um, actually could have run a few more laps before they pitted, um, so it kind of put me out where uh, I had enough to go at the end. I didn't have to pit. Hell yeah, man. Well, what, even though at that time I'm sure it was detrimental to you, but it definitely turned out to be for the better. Yeah, I was, I was a little fuming, uh, you know, especially, um, you know, if a caution don't come out because, you know, there was a lot of clean racers in there and uh, with no cautions and you're just kind of running by yourself. You know, we got a little four car draft later, but for a long time I was running by myself just praying I'd stay on the lead lap. Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, moving on here to our second place finisher, another rookie, Topster. You got us, buddy. <laughs> Yes, sir, I do. All what right. a great race. Absolutely. You guys put on one heck of a show. How did that feel to be able to push another rookie to the victory? Obviously, I know you <laughs> got you want to get that win, but I know you rookies are trying to make you know your presence known. So how did that feel? It felt pretty good to me, honestly. I was uh, content with just pu pushing Buck to the finish because the second place was good at me at Daytona, especially struggling throughout the race because – a little jam up got me back in the pack and lost the draft but it was it was a great racing after that we had a little three car draft and me and more we had a good draft going there at the end and that definitely that caution starting on the inside really helped right yeah uh it seemed like once you kind of fell from that lead pack and even if you had a four or five car draft in the back you just weren't able to catch up so when you lost that draft did you think well that's my race i i did not because it's daytona everything's unpredictable absolutely anything can happen oh yeah when you when that green flag uh wo waved at the beginning of this race did you think i'm gonna go out here and get a top two finish I I did not honestly. These are some great racers. I was just going to be happy with the top ten. I hear you, man. Yeah, next car definitely has some amazing racers. Now this is a question for both of you guys, Buck and Tobster. Being we are bringing the Rookie of the Year award to next car. How does that kind of affect your guys' outlook throughout the season? Is that going to make you guys quote unquote more aggressive? Or is that kind of something you're not really thinking about? Uh, you know, for me personally, it, it's it's not going to change the way I race. I'm going to race the way I do, and uh, I just hope, you know, that I can win that award uh, just by skill. Um, you know, it may affect some, some pit stop um, thoughts later, but it won't change the way I race. Yeah, I'll have to agree with Buck there. It's not going to change the way I race, but it would sure be a nice award to have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, because you can definitely say that you are the first one in next car history to ever win that award. That, that'd be pretty special, and I guarantee Buck would agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be uh, – it, it's an honor, you know, when you can uh, uh, win an award racing against you know, good racers. Oh, yeah. This is probably one of the best rookie classes we have ever had. There is no doubt about that. And Dale, way to pull out a third place finish, man. You didn't have the easiest of races tonight. You were up there in the top five, but you definitely had your struggles. How were you able to overcome that and just barely nudge out Tennessee for third? 
Honestly, no idea. <laughs> um, the 16 uh, Toyota was pretty good. Surprisingly, I thought it would be a uh, little worse, especially last season. I didn't have a good Daytona race at all. It was um, pretty bad. I didn't get any stage points, and I finished near dead last. But honestly, I was just happy to get a top five, let alone third, and get good stage points. So honestly, I can't complain. And to be uh, the reigning champion, that was pretty great. And I mainly say that because I saw the pre-race interview with Ten and Nick, and you guys were predicting them to be up front and to beat those two. Kind of a little proud of myself. Absolutely, man. That is not an easy feat at all. I mean, that's the defending series champion you're talking about, you know. And any any day of the week, you, you can beat that guy. It's always a good feeling. Yes, sir. So For sure. We're going to start off with Buck. Winning this race, next week is at Atlanta. How do you feel about your chances going into next week? Uh, you know, it's just it's just going to take um, some work this week, uh, you know, because I'm new. I'm actually even new to the sliders. So, mm-hmm. uh, but Atlanta is one of those tracks. It's a fast track. Uh, Handling is really important there, keeping them tires under you. So, uh, oh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what comes. Absolutely. Tires are going to be key, especially that right rear one. Yes, sir. It's uh, keep the car under you, uh, run a clean line, and uh, you know you'll find yourself up front a lot. Oh yeah, Topster. How about you, my man? What's your outlook for next week? I'm feeling pr- pretty good about it because uh, I actually just had another league Thursday, and we did a hundred percent cup race at Atlanta, and I got the second place on sliders. Damn! There you go. Can he start the season out with two back-to-back second place finishes? That would be pretty cool. That would be one for the history books there. We've had back-to-back winners, but I don't think we've ever had back-to-back second-place finishers. <laughs> Keystone. Well, did Keystone do it? Keystone had multiple times of finishing back-to-back and second behind me. I will say that. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I did not know that. Uh, Dale, does this give you any momentum heading into Atlanta, grabbing a third-place finish? I'm hoping so. I tried carrying all the momentum I had in the playoffs last season to here, and it seems like it's paid off. And the fact that last season I showed a lot of speed um, last season at Atlanta, even though I screwed myself over, if I can eliminate those mistakes, I think I have a very good chance at uh, pulling out the victory. Well, I think any, any of you three definitely have a good chance at it. But uh, Evo, do you have anything for our top three finishers here tonight? Um, yeah, I got something for the two rookies. Um, starting off with Buck. Buck going in tonight, uh, being a rookie, and Asia's going out with a win. Do you think this is your way to show the veterans of Ranger, Nick, uh, Tennessee, all them other guys who've been in this league for a couple seasons that you're here not to be messing around with? Uh, you know, honestly, the way I see it is, uh, if anything, you know, I, I felt confident that I could win, uh, you know, in, in practice, I had a really good truck. Uh, matter of fact, some of the guys I practiced with, we were on the top of the weekly speed board. So I knew the truck was good. Uh, more importantly for me, it's about earning the uh, respect of them guys. So, uh, you know, you get a little help, at some uh, tracks in the draft and stuff. And, and, you know, they know you can race. So, uh, you know, they help you out a little bit. Right. And, to you know, go based off of that, um, during pre-race, I was telling Ron, you know, if your rookies ever had any questions, you know, don't be afraid to message us. We'd be more than glad to help you guys out. And it's good to see that, you know, you're already working with others and, you know, you want to get more experience, get more track time so you can come in week in, week out to get those wins and compete for the championship. Um, so, sir, the same question, uh, finishing second tonight and you, you, you were somewhat working with the manufacturer alliances, but going to white flag, what was your mindset of going in of, do I stay with Buck and help him get his win, or do I try to make the pass and get my first win? I was just content with, with second, because second place after fighting all race just to be in the top ten, it, it felt pretty good. Oh, well, and Dale, all I have to say is you better live up to your name of doing it for Dale then. <laughs> I have done so plenty of times last season. I, I, I guarantee you I'll probably do it a couple times this season. 
Oh, I will go up high to the name. Ron, I got nothing else for our top three uh, finishers tonight. No, you guys put on one heck of a show. That was definitely a very exciting, but yet uneventful Daytona. Uh, only one caution. So, And you got multiple drivers had heck of saves. So you guys definitely put on one heck of a show tonight, and I'm looking forward to Atlanta next weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, inviting me to, to run. and uh, Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Go off what Buck said. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys have a good one. And, uh, Buck, go ahead and enjoy that win for a week, buddy. Yes, sir. We'll yep. see you guys good next time, week. Buck. All yeah, right. Thanks. Take care, guys. All right. Yep. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. See you guys. Well, Evo, that was your first race up here in the booth with us. With us. How was it? Man, as Clint Boyer would say, I'm happier than I think we're all this shit right now. <laughs> this was definitely, it's an interesting experience to be on this side of the fence of, you know, going on a tear for two seasons and then taking a season off to kind of be like, well, let's rebuild the truck series back up instead of, you know, dominating down there. You know, I'd rather see other people get wins. And coming on this side of the fence and watching, you know, the – New rookies that we got and, you know, the veterans that are coming back. It was definitely, you know, one for the ages that I'm probably going to be rewatching tomorrow before our cup race of going, damn, this was good racing. And I hope the same carries over tomorrow night. Oh, I have no doubt that it will not carry over in tomorrow night and then carry out through the rest of the season. But uh, huh? that is going to do it for us here at Daytona. Next week is at Atlanta, same time next Sunday. Tomorrow, Cup Series heads to Daytona for our race. So hopefully we can uh, produce some great racing just like they did tonight. And uh, hopefully it's a good race and one of us might come out of there with the win. That's all my end. Part of you, Ron. Absolutely. But that is going to do it for us here for Next Car Racing League. I will catch you all tomorrow night. And then for the trucks, Sunday at Atlanta. Have a good one, everybody. Deuces.